एस एस एच और सिक्योर शेल इस सिक्योर मेथड फॉर टू कंप्यूटर्स ए क्लाइंट एंड ए सर्वर टू कम्युनिकेट ईच अदर ओवर इनक्रिप्टेड चैनल्स द एस एस एच प्रोटोकॉल इज वन ऑफ द प्रोटोकॉल्स डिफाइंड अंडर टी सी पी द डिफॉल्ट पॉर्ट नंबर फॉर एस एस एच कनेक्शन ऑन ए सर्वर ईज ट्वेंटी टू सो वाट कैन यू डू वित् एस एस एच इन सिंपल वर्ड्स एस एस एच एनेबल्स यू टू मैनेज ए रिमोट मेषीन लोकेटेड समवेर एल्स फ्रॉम युर कम्यूटर दैट्स इट इट अलौस यू टू आक्स द कमेंड लाइन ऑफ द रिमोट सर्वर सो दैट यू कैन इंस्टॉल प्रोग्राम मैनेज फाइल्स एंड डेरेक्टरी अप्लोड और डाउनलोड फाइल्स पर्फॉम सॉफ्टवेयर अपडेट्स एंड सो ऑन और इन अदर वर्ड्स इट गिवस यू द एबिलिटी टू पर्फॉम ऑल द सिस्टम अडमिनिस्ट्रेशन टास्क विदउट बीइंग फिजिकली प्रसंट अट द डेटा सेंटर नेक्स्ट लेट सी हाउ एस एस एच वर्ड्स जस्ट लाइक वी यूज अ वेब ब्राउसर एंड वेब सर्वर टू सेंट एंड रिसीव एस टी टी पी रिक्वेस्ट एस एस एच ऑलसो नीड्स अ प्रोग्राम टू क्यारि औट द रिक्वेस्ट एंड रेस्पोस सो द एस एस एच प्रोग्राम इनवोल टू कॉम्पोनेंट्स द एस एस एच क्लाइंट एंड द एस एस एच सर्वर और एस एस एच डेमन फॉर इंस्टेंस द क्लाइंट मेषीन कैन बी योर लापटॉप और डेस्कटॉप कंप्यूटर द एस एस एच क्लाइंट एप्लिकेशन ईज यूशली इंस्टॉल्ड एंड एनेबल्ड बै डिफॉल्ट ऑन लिनेक्स एंड मैक ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम्स फॉर इंस्टेंस अनुबुंडू डेस्कटॉप मेषीन अदरवैस इफ यू आर ऑन विंडोस then installing git bash is one of the easiest ways to enable ssh and other unix like utilities you can check if ssh is enabled on your computer by running the ssh command and if it's enabled you will get a brief usage information to get the detailed usage information use the man command which opens the ssh manual So the SSH command utility allows you to initiate connections to a remote SSH server. Now let's discuss the SSH server. In contrast to a client machine, an SSH server has both the client and the server program running on it. So it can receive incoming connections as well as initiate connections to other SSH servers. The SSH server process is also called SSH daemon. or sshd which listens on port 22 for incoming connections on ubuntu and debian systems you can check the process status using the system ctl command now let's have a look at the connection process in an ssh connection the client is the one who always initiates the connection so the client sends a tcp request to port 22 of the server which has the ssh daemon process running on it Upon receiving the connection request the server sends its public key fingerprint back to the client Keep in mind that this is not the key you used during authentication instead it is the server's public key set up when the ssh program was installed on it and it sends this key to all clients most often it is located inside the hc ssh folder Along with that the server also sends the list of encryption and authentication methods it supports. If it's the first time you are connecting to that particular server, the client asks for user confirmation whether you really trust that server or not. If you answer yes, then the public key will be saved to the known host's file. For subsequent connections, the client verifies the key with the existing value in the known host's file. The non-host file is analogous to an SSL certifying authority during SSL negotiation. If it does not match, you get a big warning as it can potentially be a man in the middle attack. Once the server's public key is trusted, the client generates a number, encrypts it using that public key and sends it back. In asymmetric cryptography, two keys are involved, a public key and a private key. They are a pair. only the private key can decrypt something encrypted by the public key the private key must be kept safely by the owner only while the public key can be distributed to others okay back to our client and server model the client encrypts a number using the public key sent by the server and sends it back if the server is able to decrypt the number and returns a confirmation then it means the server truly possesses the private key So the server authentication part is complete. Meanwhile both the server and the client agrees upon a symmetric key as well. 
This shared key is calculated independently, but its value will be the same. For more information on how it works, you can check out Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm. This symmetric key will be used for all further communication between the client and the server. Now, what's a symmetric key? In contrast to an asymmetric key pair where the public key is used for encryption and the private key for decryption, symmetric key involves only one key which is used for both encryption and decryption. But why use a symmetric key? The main reason is symmetric encryption has less overheads than using a pair of asymmetric keys. So both the server and the client have arrived at a shared symmetric key for encrypting future messages. Now the server needs to authenticate the client, right? There are two options for that. Password based authentication and key based authentication. That is using another pair of public and private keys. Key based authentication is generally more secure as it does not involve passwords that can motivate some people to brute force your server. So it might be wise to disable password authentication altogether from the server. However, all the messages, including the password, will be sent encrypted even if you use password authentication instead of SSH keys. But how does that work? The answer is the shared symmetry key generated in the previous step. There is a common misconception that SSH uses this pair of public and private keys for encrypting the messages between the client and the server. But that's not true. The SSH key pair is only used during authentication, not for encrypting the messages. It's done using the symmetry key. The client generates the key pair using the SSH key gen command, then uploads the public key to the server where it gets stored in the authorized keys file. While the client keeps the private key, the default location of these keys will be the .ssh folder in the user's home folder. So to authenticate the client, the server encrypts a random number using the client's public key and sends it back to the client. If the client holds the private key, it will be able to decrypt the number. Then it calculates the MD5 hash of that number and sends it back symmetrically encrypted. Back there, the server already knows the number it sent. So it also calculates the MD5 hash. Then compare the value with the one returned by the client. If it matches, then it proves the client has the private key. Hence, authentication is successful. So that was a high level overview of how SSH works behind the scenes. In a previous video, I had shown you how to connect to a remote server using SSH and perform some basic commands. So I suggest you to check that video as well in case you haven't. I will give the link in the description. I hope this video helped you to learn something new. Thanks for watching.